two, one. Hi. Welcome to Louise's Bible study again. I was sitting in church this morning and we had a really great service and uh, I was thinking about a situation that had two things that had entered into my life this week and I thought, well, you know what, I need to talk to people about this because it's really important. And as I sat down after church and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, well, what scripture do I follow this up with? And the Lord led, led me to Matthew chapter 4, uh, actually Matthew chapter 5 and verse um, 13. And Jesus is talking to his disciples and he said, Are you the salt of the earth? But if you, if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. <clears throat> I was sitting there, and this thought came to me that getting involved in people's lives can be messy. I want to say that again. Getting involved in people's lives can be messy. Um, discipleship is not just a term that we use for learning, although that is true. Disciples sit at the feet of Jesus, then they learn. But a disciple is one who goes out and does the works that they're commanded to do. And I think I've looked at this generation today, and they, young people today have no clue how to interact with other people. They don't know how to talk to adults. They don't even know how to really communicate with each other. I think they go out on a date and text one another while they're on the date. Um, it's become so dysfunctional that as a society, we have completely... Uh, separated ourselves from other people uh, that way we become uh, secure because we don't have to we insulate ourselves from other people and their problems that's that person's problem I don't want to have to deal with that person's problem the other morning my husband got up and there was a uh, a woman that had worked for him uh, in the office at the history department and she had befriended him she had been a really really sweet nice wonderful lady and um, <clears throat> she had um, ongoing cancer issues and finally she had succumbed and she was on her last stages and she was at home in bed and um, she, my husband got a call from the history department and told him about her and so he got in touch with the family and said, could we come over? Larry asked me, well, would you like to go with me? And my first reaction was to be truthful. You know, I wanted to say, well, you know, I really need to pray. I really need to study. I really need to stay in the house, actually, in my pajamas. And I need to be cozy in my environment and pray and read the word and study and yada 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 and the spirit of god really interrupted my want to and said you will get dressed and go with your husband i did not know this lady i did not know her husband i had no clue who she is she had no clue who i was and uh we went over to their house introduced ourselves to the husband and he was really sweet and they, we went in, she was laying in bed, her sister was there, and I, walk, I walked over, not my husband who knew her, but me, a total stranger who she had never met. I walked over to the bed, and I started talking to her, and 
she motioned me to sit down by the bed, and I did, and she took my hand. She was so weak, she could hardly keep her eyes open. But I ministered to her, and I comforted her with the Word of God and what heaven was like, and she was a Christian, and that she had a wonderful homecoming waiting for her. And I gave her hope that what she was going through was just a short phase, and she was going to be so glad that she was in her heavenly home with her father, and and that her family would be well taken care of, and God was looking after them. And I gave her the reassurance that it was okay. It was okay to move on. Um, the family just thanked us for coming. It was a sweet moment. It was very precious. And we just learned that she has passed on and she has gone to her heavenly home. You know, if I had not obeyed the Spirit of God, I would have missed out on one of the sweetest of moments to get to share with somebody who is passing from this life to another the glorious joy that they're about to enter into and to comfort the family in their time of grieving. And you know what? That's wonderful. That's what being a disciple really is about. Recently, I um, had a situation with a young lady that's going through a really difficult time. And uh, it's a family issue. And she's at a crossroads. And um, the Spirit of God had spoken to me about her situation. And I had talked to her about it. And it was not what she had expected to hear. And it was a, it's a very dire situation. But the Lord was warning her that she needed to get out of it for the sake of herself and her family. And um, it was a hard moment. A hard moment because she didn't really want to face up to the reality of what was going on. She thought that God was going to kind of swoop in and just make everything perfect, and that wasn't happening. And um, she asked me, she said, why is it when I have prayed and prayed and prayed over it that I don't, why is it I, I can't hear from God like you can hear from God about my situation? And the, the answer is very clear. Sometimes when we get so emotionally involved, in a situation, our emotions take over and we have a very difficult time hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is trying to tell us to do. And in the turmoil of what's going around, that's when God puts other Christians in your path to help you hear more clearly of what He's wanting you to do. And um, also because sometimes we don't want to hear what God is saying. We, we want it to be our way, and sometimes his way is not our way. And so we shut him out because we don't want to have to face reality. And what God is speaking to us may be an uncomfortable moment for the time, but it will pass. I remember when I was at Rama, I was all ready to leave after my first year, and I was jumping into going, and I had even gone so far as to buy a place, and to move there, and yada, yada, yada. I had gotten way ahead of God. But you know, I thought I heard from him. I thought this was exactly what he wanted me to do. I was totally all about. And then when I got back to Tulsa, a friend said that his wife had a word for me from the Lord, and, and God, had, God had actually spoken to her in the night and told me that, I was leaving too early, and I was going to miss God if I did not redo. You know, God turned all my mistakes around, and once I admitted that I was wrong and I had to hear from Him, He turned everything around, and it worked out for the best. But you could say, well, why didn't I hear? Because we so often, we get all involved in our own way of doing things and our own thinking and our own excitement over the moment. Maybe you're involved with somebody that you, you emotionally have invested time in and they're not a Christian. And you just want to convince yourself that 
if I marry them, if I continue with them, it's all going to be hunky-dory. I'm going to turn them around. Well, you know what? You may not turn them around. They may be the worst thing that you can invest yourself into. And God is trying to help you to get out of that mess, but you just don't want to hear. But you know, the repercussions of getting involved in another person's life can also backfire on you. And sometimes people, because you tell them the truth and what they don't want to hear, but what God is speaking, they become angry. And they become angry at the messenger. And you get to be the one who they like to take their anger out on. And so it, it, it costs us something sometimes to be um, involved in other people's lives. You know, sometimes we can sit quietly by and see somebody sinning. Um, I knew of a couple one time in my Bible study, and they, they, were, they were not married. And I didn't want to say anything to them about it a long time because I knew they wouldn't come back. They would be offended. You know, I had to deal with that. I had to deal with either compromising God's truth and His Word or going along with going along. Are you going along with going along? Is there somebody in your life that you really need to speak truth to and you're worried that if you do, that they're not going to like you anymore? Well, I'm going to tell you something. There's a price to pay for serving the Lord. And sometimes it can involve our family and ones we love. That doesn't mean that you have to be hard and cold about it. But sometimes you have to recognize areas in people's lives that is detrimental to their well-being and they're not seeing it. And I just want to encourage you, be of courage, be a cur be a person of courage. Be a person that's willing to put your lamp on the table and not hide it. Don't hide who you are in Christ Jesus. Don't worry that you don't get invited to the office Christmas party, or if you do, you're standing over there by yourself because you don't fit in. Fitting in has never been the call on our lives. We have never been called to fit in. We have never been called to be a part of the group. We are called to stand out. We are called to be courageous. We are called to be people of integrity. And when you are a person of integrity, you're going to pay a price for it in today's world. Because you see, people don't want to hear, you know, you speak the truth and everybody's going, well, if I get the, if I speak, listen, you would not imagine. I get wonderful comments from y'all. I get wonderful comments. But I also get some really mean comments that come in. And you know, it's like my husband said, why do they even bother to listen to you if they hate you that bad? Just to be mean? That's what people do. And you can either brush it off and go on or if you sit there and meditate on it and you let their opinions dictate your life, you're going to end up compromising your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can't afford to do that. Our walk before the world tells everybody who we are. The, the, only, per, only, the only person most people will ever see of Jesus is your light that you shine in public. What you say, what you do, how you react to other people. You have no idea that how the changes that you're making and in, in putting in somebody else's life by the words, by the smile, by the comment, or by the truth that you're willing to uphold. And let me tell you something. You're going to be persecuted. I can guarantee you that. Persecution is going to come. It's going to come for the word's sake. And Christians today are going to be more persecuted than they have for the last, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 years going further back. No, further back. Christians have died in the early stages of the Christian church for what they believe. Christians today have never had to die unto blood like they do like they did then. 
you've never had to be had to be put to the stake and burned alive because of what you believe. And so my word to you is get a backbone and realize that being a Christian is not for the weak of heart. Being a Christian is for those who are willing to stand up for your beliefs and for what you know is right. And getting involved in people's lives, it may interrupt your schedule. It may cause you to have to get dressed when you're nice and comfy. But I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing greater than to know that you were there to meet someone else, either when they're passing or when they're struggling in a very difficult situation and you're there to comfort them and let them know you care. When my mother was sick um, and uh, I had a lot of Christian friends, quote unquote, in the church, but not a one of them ever came to visit my mother when she was sick. Not a one of them ever came to minister to her. And when she died, none of them came to the funeral to, to be by my side either. I didn't hold that against them. I just simply thought that's the way it was. It's not the way it should be. We should be there for one another. We should, we should be able to put ourselves out for others. Somebody once told me one time that their mother uh, had died and I said, I was, oh, I'm so sorry because her husband had passed on uh, about two years prior. And she said, yeah, she killed herself. And I said, what do you mean she killed herself? And said, well, she just starved herself to death until she died. And I thought to myself, you know, you're just about as cold-hearted a daughter as anybody I've ever met. The woman was grieving. She had lost her husband. And she didn't have you, for sure, to lean on. And you weren't there for her. And she just wanted to move on. And so she starved herself because she was so grieved. And 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 this is your walk of Christianity. I was just devastated by the comment that came out of this person's mouth. I thought, how, how can you live with yourself? But this is what we're like today. We're all about ourselves. We're all about ourselves because we find that other people tend to be inconvenient. Be inconvenient. Jesus was inconvenient. He had to put up with people. He had to deal with people all the time, and he loved it. He loved every minute of it. That's why he came to this earth. And he served, and he ministered, and he loved. And that's the example that today, don't, you know, Giving gifts is not about running out your credit card and putting yourself into such financial debt, debt that you can't pay it off. The gift, the greatest gift you can give is yourself. Give yourself to someone else. Offer, the, offer, offer someone that's lonely a place at your table. Have them come over and be a member of your family. Go visit them. Take them around to see the Christmas lights. Just involve yourself in the, in the life of someone else. Invest in people. Invite them to church. Don't just say, hey, we're having a service. You need to come. Say, hey, I'll take you out to dinner if you'll come to church with me. You can invest in God. He invested in you. He invested in you with the greatest gift that's ever been given. So why don't you invest in what is his priority? His priority is not going out and buying a gift certificate. His priority is giving yourself back to others like his son gave to you. I want y'all to think on this this season. Think about people around you. You're surrounded by lonely people. You're surrounded by hurting people. Pray to God who they are. Ask Him to bring you across their path and be willing to be inconvenienced. I love every one of you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.